Yehova Malak, Ola Molamad, Yehova Malak, Yami Rakis, Yehova Gadol, Makarian Tios, Yehova Erdanai, Yehova Elohim, Kurios Tios Panta Greta, Kurios Tios Pistos, Elda at Yehova. El Emuna Yehova Ibas Leon Kurios Otios O Panta Creta Basileos Basileon Kai Kurios Kurion Yehova Dabar Halal Elohim Dabar Halal Yehova Elohim Gadol Gadol Gebura El Elohim Israel Jesus Christos Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion Kurion Nimahagion Pantacreta Gadol Gadol Geburra Yehova Ishmalkam Yehova Shemma Yelnakum Yehova Yelnakum Yapa Natsak Israel La Sheker Gava Gava Triembos Yehova Jesus Christos, Panta Creta, Gadol Gadol, Geburra. Zaan Logan Ogar Tautios, Dulas Desmios and Despotes and Jesus Christos. Kurion, Kurion, Kurion. Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Numa Panta Creta, Gadol Gadol, Geburra. Maura Roshnasa, Elohim, Elohim. Ille illa e shalut, Malak, Yehova, Elohim. Gadol, Gadol, Geburra. Derek, Emunabakar, Meshvat, Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh, El Elyon, Elohim, is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness. That the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkanu to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Realizing every breath of our life on this earth in the grace of the Lord our God in order to be walking moment by moment in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit not to despise nor get ourselves to be making up of the end or grieved in the teaching ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit the instructions of Lord God the Father so the two things he says in Proverbs 3.11, Do not refuse, reject, despise, neither get grieved of his correction. Because for whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. And happy is the man who findeth wisdom. So wisdom cannot be taught if you are walking contrary to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The knowledge of Bible doctrine cannot, cannot be comprehended in you if you are not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So every time we start, we ask you to get in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. 
by the confession of your sins through rebound because we are walking contrary to the word of lord god we are incurring sicknesses upon us and that's very simple logic people they are trying trying to dob you with untempered mortar but not letting you know the fact behind your sickness leviticus chapter 26 the five cycles of disciplines followed by deuteronomy chapter 28 emphasizes the importance that every believer should walk in the fellowship of lord god the holy ghost in learning his correction and why does he correct us if you are good and perfect and upright he wants to put you test like job that he doesn't want to correct you the instructions when he's been saying the 14 verses in deuteronomy 28 the first 14 verses for blessings the remaining verses when he's teaching for cursings or the corrections or the chastisements is he knows very well that mankind right from the mother's womb as as a 48:8 teaches to us we are rebellion to the core we are not the men who are walking in accord with the truth but we are rebellion so god the father knows we are rebellion so he has given us instructions for blessing if you love obey and keep his commandments such and such blessings if you reject if you don't obey the commandments of lord god the father then the discipline will be in five categories and that's what today the christendom is able to face the first category if ever you look in the time of isaiah till his ministry was they came till to the third cycle or till to the fourth cycle but never they entered the fifth cycle but when his ministry was got over the people never really respected the word of lord god as we look in the time of isaiah in chapter 1 through following very clearly the same principles applying today for us in our present christendom because you are rejecting the word of god to the highest in your pulpits and you are being grieved by the instructions of a bona fide gifted pastor teacher who is exegeting the passages day by day for you to teach the word of the lord as such today when our, our lord of a god in luke chapter 10 claims how are you reading what are you reading the thing when he claimed to that man what are the two commandments he said how are you reading it how are you analyzing the passages and making it known the reason is john 1:18 passages should be analyzed in the realm of exegio my standards not based upon your experience not based upon your xyz terms what the word of lord god teaches to us in exegio my standards because the things pertaining to his greater revolution or greater teaching cannot be occupied until and unless you ascend the seven steps of glory so what are the seven steps of glory at least seven times you have to read the bible seven times you need to write the bible then day by day you will understand that the importance and the significance of the words of the lord of a god when he said your word is my life when he said your word is my lamp when he said your word is everything to me your word is everything to me when i find wisdom i find happiness so all these things when is mentioning is mentioning unto us something of a very great and unique value that this world has failed to learn about that and we are referring back to the things pertaining to the church age believers so much has been given unto us in this kind of catechesis of the church age but so little we are paying back and sometimes we are not even producing the fear of lord god far less we have to pay back the glory of lord god so much has been given and so much has been expected from us but at we look we are not worthy of that in the entire lifetime if you would ask have you read the bible the people will not even raise their hands and doesn't mean to say that if they read the bible they can understand but at least they could get acquainted because today the preachers are not preaching the word as exactly it has been found in the bible that's the major problem they're adding the interpretations they're diverting the concepts they're not looking into the context they're not teaching them what is the real intention in the standards of this isagogical categorical and above all in the standards of dispensations followed by exegeomai teaching 
So they can't divide the scriptures, whether these passages belong to the Israel or the church or to the future millennium. And in fact, indeed, application applies. So we have to apply to the present spiritual condition, which is absolutely dead. It is not alive. As we read in Job chapter 33, when we fall deep sleep, then he is going to come and teach us his instructions. But you have fallen not deep sleep into the standards of the desires of the world. You haven't put to death the things pertaining to your flesh. So when you are still alive in the world, you cannot learn the things pertaining to Bible doctrine. So in simple terms, he meant to say in Colossians 3, 5, put to death the deeds of the flesh. And then, if you have been risen with Christ, seek those things that are above. And then you can confirm to the E icon image what he mentions in Colossians 3.10, for which cause we have been kept alive in Christ, to attain that high knowledge. And why do you require that knowledge? The people, the difference between literate and illiterate, you can easily find out, particularly in my country, India. The men who have learnt more, the men who have some knowledge more, they are ready to deceive the men who haven't learned. If they take a loan of 100 rupees, and the people who haven't learned, and they take a bond on that. So the learned one takes a bond from the unlearned, and he makes that 100 into 1,000, or he wants to make that into 10,000. And after a certain span of time, after paying interest, so now this man would come, I will give you the principal amount of 100 rupees. Then he would say, no, when did I give you 100? It is 1,000 rupees. And the reason when they write a bond and sign and give for them a copy, they don't know how to read it. They can't read it. So they get deceived. The same exact copy is happening for us in our pulpits because though you have learned the secular language in your professional courses, you have been graduated, but you haven't learned to know what exactly is there in the Bible. And that's what the entire Christendom is taken into great apostasy by the false teachers. So they don't know what is dispensation, which has to be the basic fundamentals. When church change is a deadlock period of prophecy, people would love to say prophecy has been fulfilled by running over the prophecy knots. And do you know what is the criteria today? Because Lord God the Father said, go and preach unto all the gospel. And everyone has been in the reconciliation ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So there is no proper minimum cadre or qualification. Every knucklehead in a vision or a dream he thinks or he has the power to talk in tongues. He has been following the signs and the wonders. He becomes by early morning a preacher for you. He becomes a, a, a Christian messenger for you. But in reality, there is no proper qualification. If God the Father would set up his share of responsibilities or his demands, what exactly a preacher should be, for example, like Ezekiel over there, what we are reading in chapter number 4, 390 days to the left side, 40 days to the right side, eating your food in such and such a manner, being cooked with such millets, and then baking up your barley cakes in the presence of this defiled man, because they are not disciples to me. So what you do, you're going to cook it up with human excreta. If such conditions were been placed, I wish God the Father would have placed those conditions in the church age as well. Not many men would come to dare enough like Korah and Dathan to rebel against the anointed ones of the Lord God. But yet it is the grace of God the Father. He gave for everyone to do the ministry of full-time reconciliation, not only with the holy man or walk of life, but going on to preach the gospel of truth. If not, the people will perish. But you men are not preaching the truth. You men are making a corruption of the truth. Destroying, you have given infiltration to your mind. Therefore, you don't have the fear. You don't understand the scriptures. Exactly in the time of my Christ, you were still under the age of the Israel and beginning with the church age from there on till to the standards of the rapture that we have till AD 96, the pre-canon period and the post-canon period. And when once the post-canon period has been done for us, given to us, the things pertaining to the temporal spiritual gifts have been seized off. So what do you have now? You have something new now to learn, to 
make every believer to work the works of Lord God, because with you, Yehovah Elohim is also working. In Mark chapter 16, in verse number 20, we have this. And those signs and wonders, what he's been teaching over there in verse 16 through 20, is emphasizing for those apostles, even the shout of Peter healed, the kerchief and apron of Paul healed, to establish that they were sent by Lord God. These were the apostles of Lord God. And when the dear friend of Paul, Epaphroditus, couldn't be healed, he just prayed for his sickness. And once you have been established, there is no need for you to follow the signs and wonders. And now after the completion of the can of scripture, except in the dark, demon-possessed countries. And why I use the word accept? Because some people will not come to Christ. And here the credit doesn't go to the one who is doing that, but the credit goes to the sovereign grace of God. His omnipotent, his omniscient knowledge of God. His dunamis ability of God. He can make the dead to live. He can make the day to dark. Man cannot stand against nature, far less he can stand against the Creator. So when he's transforming them from death to life, the whole intention of God the Father is to see at least out of the ten leapers, at least one would come back. Because the grace of God the Father is like the way how we are shown to Jonah. There are so many people, they do not know the difference between right and left. How would I destroy them? The same thing, Second Peter 3, 9, his long-suffering and patience, because he doesn't want anyone to perish. Because he knew, if you're not believing in Christ, if you're not walking to the will of God the Father, he knew very well where you will be for eternity. That's why he comes up with grace to give you one more day, one more chance. Why? Because he wants you all to be saved. And there could be no greater love than this. That he laid down his soul for us, he did it. He died for us, a substitute of spiritual death on the cross, physically being absolutely vicarious suffering to the cause. Why? Because he loveth you. But you pay back with bitter love towards my God. Your love is not pure. Your love is absolutely bitter. Therefore, you hate his instruction. You reject his instruction. You despise his, 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 his correction. And when he wants to make you to look what exactly is his discipline, you grieve over his discipline. And that dear brethren, God the Father loveth you till you have time on this earth through the unbelievers is going to show the grace. But how many people will come back to real salvation? We know not. But yet God the Father in such dark demon possessed countries is still giving you the grace to understand, to come to Christ. Not for the name and fame of the minister over there or for the ministry over there. The ultimate goal, what we can do on this earth in all the things, it is the grace of Lord God. Nothing more than that. In everything you take, it is nothing but the grace of Lord God. In everything you do, it is nothing but the grace of Lord God. Nothing else than that. So in His grace, what we can boast? If we are boasting, we are morons. We are just the things pertaining to the Lord's plan and to the Lord's messengers on this earth. In such kind of a serious responsibility, what He has placed over us, and since in this world there is no qualification criteria for the pastor, every knucklehead would think he would become a reverend or a doctor or XYZ in the standards of his privilege, and he wants to preach. And what is preaching? If these literate people would learn and if they would know what exactly is there in the Hebrew or Greek or understand the real depth of the meaning of the word, we could get some change. We're not expecting the change, but we should be the change. If we are changed to preach iota upon iota and carer upon carer and let go to divide the word of Lord God and learn it diligently, learn it according to the standards of the mind of Christ. If you would learn those things, 
if he would come to preach in exegium my standards because John 1.18 talks about that. No man has seen God at any time except the Son who comes from the bosom of God the Father. He would exegete the passages for you. The word is exegium I. And all this sheer rut of business is what these people they're trying to do with the miracles or healings or oil or XYZ standards of their business. Everything will be winded up. But Satan has its own plan. But we are not ignorant about the cunning fables of Satan. The Satan may have many schemes. We have wider wisdom. We, we have wisdom wider than Satan. The reason is the scripture, John, is the scripture, Psalms 119, verses 97 and 98. We get through the precepts of Lord, greater wisdom than our enemy. Who could be our enemy? Satan. And Satan wants you to know only one thing. Don't read the Bible. Don't look what exactly is there in the Bible. If needed, you put the Bible in the dustbin and later on if it has been needed, as they take the script papers in India and they go on to put it in the books along with other books which have been termite eaten. So they also love to put Bible in that because they haven't used. They don't know what is the importance of this Bible. And some of the people would love to put fully covered up the Bible in the water. I don't even realize that that's the Bible. Some of the put, some of them, they put the Bible in the dustbin. This is the present status quo of the things what this world they are respecting. If the Word of God is the, if God Himself is the Bible in the form of the things pertaining to the written Word, then how much more we should be the people as such to perform, to really respect the mind of Christ. They don't fear. So what they do? They try to put it up in a dustbin. They try to soak it up in the water and forget it. And they think it has rained, so the Bible is gone. And some of them, they put the Bible in the dust pieces, in the, in the scrapbooks of the things, because they knew very well those scrapbooks have been taken and have been eaten by the termites. And even in that, you will find the Bible put upon that. This is the present condition. But these people, they don't wake up to really fear the correction of Lord God. And the pastors don't have the respect to teach the word of Lord God. It has become a fun for them to go on to do the things pertaining to their oil business, healing business, kerchief business, begging business. You know, they don't have proper qualification. If God the Father would qualify them, they would know what is the burden of knowing and learning the word of Lord God. But since God the Father hasn't sent them or qualified them, the, the, the way he says in Jeremiah 23, I haven't chosen them, I haven't sent them, yet they ran. Such are the people in the midst of the present Christendom who have led the Christendom to such great apostasy standard. Sometimes we feel the way how the king Jeroboam in First Kings chapter 13 in verse 34 and 35, introduction of idolatry to the standards of this world, which has made upon the face of the earth such a burden that it cannot be removed. So such people, they have been equally yoked with the, th with the things of this world to be so much desirous that they don't want to preach the word of God, but they want to make up the people to learn or to make their life according to the standards of their lustful patterns on this earth. That's it. They don't want anything greater than that. Everything you take, they just come back and perform silly, stupid lies on this earth. They're just performing that. So what is pleasing to them? What is effective to them? And every knucklehead guy wants to believe that ministry, but they don't want to look what exactly is the true healing from the word of Lord God. And Lord God doesn't operate through you. You haven't been sent by Lord God. He said in Jeremiah 23, verses 18 through 22, If I would have sent them, they would have turned them to learn my counsel. They would have bade them to walk in my 
statutes or prescription demands of the word of God, but they haven't sent them. Therefore, they came by their own self. So what they do, they don't have proper qualification. They don't have proper faithful preparation. They haven't been given the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher. And therefore, they rise for you to become bastard Christians. They don't go through the proper suffering in Christ. They don't establish that legitimate relationship with Lord God. They are illegitimate to me. Why? Because these people, they don't have to know me. They come to serve me with their lips, their hearts being far away. And since these are illegitimate Christians, the word is very, very clear. Bastards in, Heb in Hebrews 12th chapter in verse number 8 in the KJV translated. These are bastards. He counted them. Why? Because these people, they haven't learned the importance of finding the true fear of Lord God, except they serve in the realm of the lips and their hearts being far away. And why it is? No proper exposition of the word of Lord God. That's why. And people are thinking it's so great for us to spend our time in the present Christendom by becoming ministers. The culprits are the ministers who are standing in your pulpits. Greater culprits than those ministers are the pews. The believers who do not have even uh, at least 1% of fear in their life to cross-check like the Berean crowds. In Acts chapter 17, they went home and they diligently searched the scriptures, the things what were being taught even by Apostle Paul, they matched to the word of God or not. <laughs> but today a miracle head believer would come and he would say, having 10 or 20 people surrounded by him to give some witnesses and having a witnesses that she was not earlier pregnant for 13 or 14 years and now after this prayer she became a pregnant and people love to believe them. That's why Apostle Paul, when they have been told the signs shall follow in Mark chapter 16, as many people don't believe that to be in the canonization of the scripture, the signs and wonders, the deadly things, the deadly serpents, and all of those things, he has given them for these people to realize that he has been sent by God. But he did not stop there all the life doing those miracles or signs and wonders because when we look Philip, the evangelist, doing his work, after that we find no record in the Bible about his teachings. So when we have these people who have done those works, they were not continued. We find them only till the canonization of the scripture. And when once we find the canonization of the scripture, majority of the New Testament apostle, Paul, servant and apostle, who have come to serve Lord God. The majority of the scriptures in such a manner we read there. And then Peter, writing his second epistle, he is growing up to teach to us. The instructions given by Paul are difficult to be understood by those people who are not disciples, or not having a constant, consistent mind to learn the word of Lord God. So in simple words, he teaches to us that if you are not a disciple of the word of Lord God, you are going to die sin unto death. Because you're going to use other scriptures as well for your own misunderstanding. And that leads you to understand your brother and you're going to die, sin unto death. Because the same problem is happening today. First of all, you don't understand that the ministry, what has been handed over in our lives, as he prayed in John 17, 26, he declared and is yet going on to declare till the rapture of the church. So the work is to preach. The work is to teach. The work is to go on every day. Ephesians 3, 8 through 11, because the passage is very clear in the mystery epistle that the grace that has been bestowed upon us is to teach the word of love. Lord God and nothing else than that. How simple the fact is in the Bible and you are ignorant about that. Tomorrow, dear brethren, God the Father, when he said, even for Abraham in Genesis chapter 17, walk before me and be perfect, the standards walk before him and be perfect, meant to say, what are the demands of the word of Lord God? What I want you to be, that you make it up, that you guard it up, that you keep it up, and then I will count you to be tami aim without blame, and I will count you to be, you are absolutely dear one of mine. 
At the age of 99, we look Lord God appearing unto Abraham. So you think you will be waiting till the age of 99 so that God could come and appear unto you and you say, walk before me and be the perfect. That was a time of revolution when what that canon was not completed through visions, through dreams. But after the completion of the canon of scripture, you have the infallible and inerrant word of Lord God, which is solid Bible. Why do people ignore Bible as if the termites eat the book, you throw it in a dustbin? You don't even have a respect that it's a Bible and you put it in a scrape pieces of water. And the people who are in foreign or abroad, the way how they sponsor to this man in India. And they go to the Gideon International Bibles. Just come back and look. The dealers who have taken these Bibles, how they're making it to be given for termites to be eaten up. Just ask accurate account of that. But you would say, we are not having that to ask because our duty is to give. But what you gave, is it been effective? And tomorrow you think what you gave was effective in the sight of God, but it was not been properly used. The same thing will is happening for us in the church. The things pertaining to secure the mind of Christ, the things pertaining to the great word of Lord God, which we need to secure... So God the Father doesn't take that, saying that I gave you the word, you did not handle it, so nothing for me, I don't have anything for you to put past punishment. He doesn't say that. He's going to punish you for dishonoring his word. In the same way you people put along your money in Gideon International, you people come back and give your Bibles to these poor people, you think. But the dealers who are in, bit, in between the recipient and uh, the, the receiver and the giver, the dealers who are there in between, the people who are marketing them, this man, they don't even have the fear that it is the Bible and they keep in their cupboards, they keep in their standards of their boxes where termites eat them. And life-changing is the word of God. No man's motivational speech. No man's sheer arts of preaching of oratory styles. Life-changing is all the time the word of Lord God and the prime duty of the minister is to expound what exactly is there in that word of Lord God. In accordance with the old and new and getting back something new for you so that you can become kinekatesis of the standards of this mind. Nothing on this earth can change you apart from the word of Lord God. Even the translations what these people they produce, they do not match the essence of the glory of original Hebrew or Greek. And since it doesn't match the original essence of the Hebrew or Greek, really, dear brethren, you are really misleading and misguiding the church. You know why? Because you don't have the criteria for qualification. On this world, you know how man is, how man is very cunning. You want to have, for you to be in a finance business, you have to pass your PhD in finance. So that you can be a well-qualified if needed. You want to become a CA or CS in India, we talk about. Chartered accountant or company secretariat. If you want to be a mechanical engineer, he wants you to see what best you are. If you want to become a doctor, in which area you are, particularly are you a cardiologist or nephrologist or neurologist or any other thing. So they want even them to look, the reports being followed by many other patients so that they could give them a testimony saying that this doctor is good. I went to such and such doctor. He was a neurophysician. He is a, he is a neurosurgeon. He's such and such. I have been to such kind of a great physician who has been guiding us with a good doctor, XYZ terms. You know, they love to take the report. They love to take the testimonies and they love to go to the doctor. And because the doctor is well qualified, because in India you may not have a very specialization of the examinations of the studies. So what do they? Oh, this this doctor has come from foreign. So he is a London written. He has done his FRCS. He has done this. He has done that. So people would love to look them, and then they would say, "We will go for such treatment," because. They want their body to be absolutely controlled. They don't want to be wrongly diagnosed. They don't want something wrong to happen to it. 
So in each and every field of your life, including from the small to the greatest, your mechanic, your four-wheel mechanic, your two-wheel mechanic, your provisional store department, your meat or butchery department, whatever it is, your boutique department as well for women, you want to go to a man who is expert, who is brilliant, who can make your mental worries to be clear, that's what it is. Vain imaginations. To say to think that if you go to such and such expert, everything will be fine. Only expert is the word of God. Only expect is Lord God. Come unto him, confess your sins. Come unto him, do the will of God the Father. Come unto him, because he said he's going to smite you with sickness. The only reason, because you have sinned against him. How did you sin against him? By not learning the word of Lord God not obeying the demands of the word of Lord God. And you people would love to go for oil business. You people would love to go and listen to say that there is a minister who is going to heal the sicknesses. Ah. So you think he's going to call you, come for three weeks, apply your oil, she'll be good, do this, do that. For what? And such sicknesses for believers, you have to understand why that sicknesses. Is it first for you for testing like Job? If you have been so faithful, you have been so upright, you have been walking in all the commandments of the word of Lord God, and you will understand according to your conscience, at least if you are if you are better than the Samaritan woman of John chapter 4, if you are having a better consciousness than the Samaritan woman, you would say, I sinned. Because you know very well, you're not taking your cross every day. You know very well in your entire lifetime you haven't read the Bible. You know very well that you should be joined as a disciple, grow up into grammatics. You haven't done any one of the things, what are the demands of the word of Lord God? And you cannot expect to be like Job suffering in your life. If you're better or to count you morally good than that Samaritan woman, but the Samaritan woman is thousand times better than what we are having hypocritical lies in our heart. Because we would say, why we are suffering? Because we would say, we are not sinning. But in return, you just examine each and every word of Lord God, how much you are sinning, how much you are grieving, how much you are squelching, how much you are lying, how much you are making your body to resist against the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to work the will of God, the Father in you. Just look. And you would say, I cannot suffer, I cannot get sickness. But if God the Father is suffering as a believer for us, you think that you are like Job. But you are not even considered to be anywhere close nearby to Job or Noah or Daniel. Not even nearby to the past dispensation believers. Far less you can compare yourselves to be greater than John the Baptist in the New Testament. Because your conscience knows very well. At least a Samaritan woman is thousand times better than us. She accepted the fact, she said, even when God the Father calls him to get your husband, she accepts the fact, I have no husband, even the fifth one with whom you are, he is not your husband. And Lord God the Father says, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says to that woman, saying that, you told the truth. But your consciousness are not telling the truth either. Just look, every day carry your cross, come to the church and learn Bible doctrine, encounter wisdom. When you find wisdom, you find happiness, you find peace, you find pleasant, you find everything, the, the ways of God the Father to find for you for your health, the strength in your bones, everything you will find there. But you are not encountering the wisdom every day, but rather you are encountering the world's wisdom doctors to heal your sickness. And they would love to come. Okay, we would examine this. So they would say, there is a problem with your womb. So we go on to operate. If not, it turns to become a cancer. And they operate. And even after one and a half year, again, the same sickness spreads through a body. And now they say, we will go on for biopsy and we will look why that infection has again started in your womb. And these people, they think we can we can go on to the healing business, miracle business. We can go on to such and such great men. But these are believers. I'm not talking about unbelievers. For unbelievers, the things may happen, so they should believe to Christ. But for believers, when you're suffering through sickness, the two things which you should keep in your mind. It has to be like Job. If not, 
It has to be because you have sinned against Lord God by not obeying His commandments. Missing the mark. Harmatia. Missing the mark. Chat of the Hebrew. In olden days, the way how they used to measure the, no, the, the, the things by knots, the same thing, the Hebrew word chata, when they want to reach the target, they, they put this rope. And if that has not been reached to the target, the distance from the target and where this rope has landed, they count that by knots. And that is what your missing of the mark is all about. That's chata. And harmartya is what you look, disobeying the commandments of Lord God. So for sure, if a believer has been suffering with sickness in this life, you're called to live a life sick free. You're called to renew your strength day by day as the eagle renews, goes on to strength as we read in Isaiah 40, 31 yesterday. You're called not just to enjoy the details of life on this earth, but rather you have been called day by day, renovate the standards of your thinking because the structure even in the physical body of an athlete, the DNA will make it up to adjust to that strength of the repeated force upon that muscle. Then the same way when you have been day by day graduating, meditating upon the word of Lord God, you have to ascend the seven steps, then you will look the eighth step of his glory, and then you are having something great of a strength which this world can never know. But you are missing out that duty, you are missing out that pleasure, you are missing out that great thing at the cost of your life in a particular day for example today if god the father keeps you or sustains you to be alive just calculate in your time from morning to evening what have you done till you sleep how much of your time you slept how much of your time you entertained your life how much of your time you chit chatted gossip In all of those things, you are called to be the disciple or the one working out to be the reconciliation ministry with Lord God the Father. How much of the words of God you have taught them? How much of the holiness of your life you have manifested to these unbelievers so that they could come to Christ? But you know very well, dear brother, and you haven't done nothing except to chit-chat your life, except to make that grace of God on that particular day for vain glory. You're just spending your time in many, many silly, stupid things of this life. And if you wait for Lord tomorrow, Lord, thank you for this day you gave for us so that we have destroyed it. Give us one more day tomorrow. As the disciples were taught the prayer, give us today tomorrow's bread. Just look, why do you suffer? Why do you enter into sickness? Why you don't have the peace? Why you don't have the paths of pleasantness in your life? Just look your way of life. Just look your thinking of life. Just look how stupid you are. And up to what extent you are such kind of a great stupid. Just look. And you think, I haven't done anything against Lord God. Why God is smiting me? And they'll have to go to appoint the elders, James 5, 14 and 15. They want to fulfill. And if the elders, they come, these elders also don't have anything else in their brain except to think, Lord, heal, Lord, heal, Lord, heal. Lord cannot heal you till you could go back and confess your sins. And it's not a business where you can say, so you get into sickness, you come to this minister, this minister applies oil and prays for you and is going to get his name for you to be great on this earth. So what does he do? He makes you to come in the standards of his business of oil or kerchief. But never he says, you are sinning against Lord God. Take up your cross every day, follow my Christ. Come back and learn the word of Lord God. Never you will say that. The same thing as we would find over here. When Peter preached, they repented, they took baptism immediately. They never gave another chance to say, we will come tomorrow. We will do this, we will do that. That's the work of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, through the Spirit and the power of the Word of Lord God to transform you, to renovate you, to perform the demands of the Word of Lord God in you. That's the way how it works. The same thing, the Word of Lord God in, any, in everyone's life. It doesn't give you the second chance to take a second thought, to wait till tomorrow, to see what will happen tomorrow, what will happen day after tomorrow. No, it doesn't give you that. Then and there itself. That's what even Paul, before 
he was Saul before he was Paul, encountered the Lord. On the way to Damascus, it is hard for you to kick against the pricks. And then he was been said, go to the place, and it will be told for you what to be done there. That's what the word of Lord God burns your heart. When we look in Luke chapter 24, the way they were passing out and they were coming to tell the things what Christ our Lord of God, when he break the bread, their eyes were opened up and he teaches to them the importance of breaking the bread so that even whenever we come to partake in the elements of the Lord God, we have to go back in doing the evangelism work of Christ. So breaking the bread, they come up and they teach. In simple words, they emphasize the truth that when he was speaking, their hearts were burning. And today the ministers don't want to teach to you the truth so that you could come back to your sins, confess before the Lord and go back to work out the life that has been given for you to enjoy in great pleasant of happiness. Proverbs chapter 3 teaches to us, dear brethren, the one who encounters wisdom, the one who finds the word of Lord God, they're finding the paths of pleasantness. If you're not finding the word of Lord God, irrespective of your money, irrespective of your name, irrespective of your fame, irrespective of all the security that you have been thinking on this earth and you have been bounded to live on this earth by that security, you're really a moron. Nothing is greater than the security what you find in the word of Lord God. Nothing can destroy you. So the only route is to come back to confess your sins. And after one and a half year of that surgery, now they look for bio biopsy and they love to tell you the result and they want to have a miracle in their life to say nothing is wrong. <laughs> the solution is not to your sickness. The solution is your sin. Sin goes on with sickness. You sin the more, the more the sickness. You cannot spend your time to waste your life on this earth because in Mark chapter 16 in verse number 20 we have the word to learn which says God the Father is working together with them and if he's working together with you today the same principle because the apostles of the past are not here. Now it is everyday believer's life is working through you therefore your body is now been made to be the temple of the living Lord God of hosts. Your body is not your own. You have been bought up with a great price. Therefore glorify God the Father in your spirit, in your body, through the spirit which indwelleth in you. So he wants you to learn in very, very simple words. He wants to work through you. The same thing we read in Romans 8, 26-28. Sunani Lambononai, the joint partaker with us. He wants to operate in us. He wants to work through us. He wants to make us to understand. Don't be still morons. You know, two people want to go on a journey. The part A says, I will come with you with part B. And the part A, part A says, tomorrow he cannot come. So now the part B with whom he wants to go up the journey, he's been grieved. Because he thinketh that part B is not going to be with me. He's not going to come with the journey to me. So what happens over there? Till part A or part B make up equal terms, having the same spirit, having the standards of working out and doing the things pertaining to God, till they could come to that great mind of understanding, the journey cannot be operated. Till either of the part of the believers who have failed to take their journey, there will be a problem to progress. The same thing with us. The same thing with God the Father who wants to operate through you. Now he is your partner. He is the senior most experienced one to carry the yoke and the burden of Lord God. As the yoke goes on to say, the experienced and the older yoke or the things pertaining to that bullock has been tied up with the inexperienced and the anger one so that the experienced one can teach the inexperienced one to carry the yoke equally. That's the real word for yoke. 
fixing your eyes to become disciple upon the teaching of the shepherd who has been now to be experienced one. And in every body, it is nothing but Lord God, the Holy Ghost, the senior most experienced one. And what we are, we are inexperienced one. So every day we come to learn the word of Lord God so that we could learn to carry this yoke of the burden because God the Father wants to operate through you in you. And that's the very simple logic. Working through us. But you haven't prepared. You are waking up your body to be a sick-oriented sickness. If you are sickened, if you have been in the realm of casualty ward or departments of the standards of your psychopath birds, who is going to work now? That just imagine the illustration. Part A and part B of the two people want to make a journey. One is ready, one is not ready. The other one will be frustrated. The very simple logic what we find over here for us in our life. God the Father is all the time ready to work in you through the power of Lord God the Holy Ghost controlling you, but He cannot use you until unless you have been faithfully prepared. You are reaching the maturity of the word of Lord God. You are growing from milk to bread, from bread to meat. You just imagine in your life you cannot get married to a baby. You want to get married to a woman who has been fully grown up. Physical, mental, spiritual. If you're marrying to a baby, your life will be flopped. Because baby, he hasn't grown up. Baby hasn't, though she's been slowly physically growing up, neither you can have physical pleasure with her because that's why we find the marriage age in country India from 18 to 21. They don't want to marry below the age of 18 because the body will not be grown up. That takes a minimum 15 years. So physically she's not grown up. And how you can reason with the baby, the baby who doesn't have proper sense of humor to reply back to you. Minicabs. So you cannot have your life happiness with such kind of a one. The same thing with us. Being a joint partaker, a joint partner with Lord God the Father, if you are baby... That meant to say, if you are not grown up, if you are not able to look the terms and conditions from milk, but the people are still dying in milk. And what is the stage of the milk? Just examine yourselves. Do you have these qualities in you? In First Peter chapter 2, you find these qualities. He says over here, beginning with, Verse number one. Therefore, laying aside all malice, number one, all guile, number two, all hypocrisy, number three, all envies, number four, and all evil speakings, number five. There are five categories which you should thoroughly check if you're still baby. So the very first thing he emphasizes, all malice, the Greek word kakia, that which is wickedness, wherewith wickedness you are not ashamed because you are breaking the laws, the demands of the word of Lord God. And you are not ashamed of that. If every day you should come and learn the word of Lord God, you are not ashamed to break it. That's called to be wickedness, kakia. That's called to be malice. And you would just come weekly once to the church to listen some discourse for half an hour or 10 or 20 minutes. You get frustrated not to get corrected yourself, not to get take, not to take the deep instructions of the word of Lord God. And you just go back. Why? Because you just want to come and appear to give your attendance to the church saying that, Lord, I'm coming to the church, look into my heart. But you doesn't be reflecting back the great glory of God the Father because you're still a minicap. God the Father cannot use you as a joint partner till you could grow up, till you could learn the experience and the burden. 
That's the reason he says he's working through them because he knew them, because he knew them very well that they're going to use the powers and signs and wonders to establish the word of Lord God. And once they have been established, Apostle Paul emphasizes in the book of Acts, when we look particularly in chapter 14 or in particular chapters till the end, two years at a place, three years at a place, one and a half year at a place, one year at a place, or six months at a place, or three months at a place, teaching, teaching, teaching day by day, day by day, the word of Lord God, equipping them for the perfection of the word of Lord God, day by day, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, day by day, exegeomai standards, day by day, esagogical standards, day by day, teaching them the truth, the revolution, what he gave was something great of an information called to be the mystery doctrine of the church age, and how blessed will be the people in that places when they have been listening to the word of God and accurately responding to the word of God. So we look not signs and wonders to operate through them. The same thing when he comes to Colossians chapter 1, he writes that I have the suffering, at least a little part, which I have to pay through this flesh. I cannot go through the vicarious sufferings of my Christ. At least I have to pay the mental agony of my Lord God to be fulfilled. What is that mental agony of my Lord God? To teach the word of Lord God, to train you up in the word of Lord God, to tell the things pertaining to the glory of Lord God every day, every day, every day. And today, no pastor is having that burden. In fact, indeed, because they don't even believe the title as pastor teachers. They want reverence. They want holy reverence. They want every mannerism of occultish names wherewith they forget the legitimate title given for us in the Bible as pastor teachers. Therefore, they don't teach. These are not teaching shepherds to my Lord, being sent by Lord God the Father. These are the ones who have come for their own will. That they haven't been sent by Lord God, as he said, they have ran. Why? Because if they have been sent by Lord God, they would teach to you the truth. They would help you to understand the mind of Christ. But these people, they haven't been sent by Lord God. And it is a shame that we are still surviving in such Christendom, though we are knowing that we are being in such a fallen state, yet there is no change by the pastor teachers to come back and teach the word of Lord God every day. There is no change to come back and exegete the passages, and they continue in their same sherets of lies, their oratory preachings. They continue in the same way of life. They just continue. And why they want to continue such life of a lie? The logic is very simple. They hate my Lord. <laughs> they love him with their lips. They don't have the trembling fear as Isaiah 66, 1 and 2 teaches. The Most High Lord God dwelleth in the heaven and he also dwelleth in the hearts of those men who fear and tremble at his word. But you people don't love to love to fear at his word. If you were really loving to fear at his word, like Malais or Kakia, you wouldn't have taken a routine step to break the laws of Lord God. And you know what a wickedness is that? You're not even ashamed that you're breaking such laws. Today, if you wake up and if you're not carrying your cross and coming to Christ, in the sense, if you're not having a burden to learn the word of Lord God from the right bona fide gift of a pastor teacher who is a male believer, not to a female, never to a female, it has been given. So don't misunderstand it. The bona fide gift has been given to a female. Woman can have her ministry towards a human arena, but not over men. She can never have authority over men. Kindly correct these things because the practices in the pulpits today, the women are trying to preach. And it's a shame for us to look as for Isaiah when he said, the women shall be rulers over you. Why? Because the men are not faithfully prepared. And this woman shall not go to disobey the commandments of the word of Lord God. It is a bona fide gifted pastor teacher who is a male believer who is going to teach to you the truth every day because woman during her man's time she cannot come to the church and preach. That's the reason. And above all, we read the parent woman called to be the Eve, adding the things, deleting the things, taking carelessly the things. So woman is not allowed to add. Woman is not allowed to delete. Woman is not allowed to make up the things to be more curious or less curious. So the bona fide work of the pastor teacher, which is to teach. So where you're coming today and you're shameless, as we read this, I speak for your shame. As we read the same thing in Mark 16, 14. This we talk about because you are shameless. 
And the reason why you are shameless, because Christ has not yet resurrected in you. Christ has not yet been formed in you. That's why you are shameless creatures. And yet these people don't believe that God the Father reprimands them that these are shameless people. So all Malah is the first category because you think you're like Job, but you're in return you're not even compared to be to the dust of the feet of Job on this earth. Because you know why? Because you're having all malaise, you're having that kakia, you're having no shame at all when you break the commandments of the word of Lord God. And every time you come and you're alive tomorrow, you just first think that you're breaking the commandments of the word of Lord God. And what are the commandments of the word of Lord God, which he said, carry your cross every day. You know where the standards of your thinking according to the mind of Christ. And then the second one, you look all guile. The Greek word is called to be dolas. And dolas meant to say that which would go on to be subtle nature, deceitful nature, tricky nature. And today people are following such tricky nature. So what they do, they entice you, they deceive you, they delude you, they allure you, they beguile you. So the logic is very simple. All gal, dolas, what it is. <laughs> deceiving others. The way how these people, they are running the present Christendom now, deceiving many men. Why? They don't teach the word of Lord God every day. If the ministry for which you have been appointed in the church age by the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, if it is not to teach the word of Lord God, then you are guile, then you are dolas, then you are deceiving them. That's the reason we are talking to you, saying the point. If there would be a qualification for the pastor teachers, how many of them would be really qualified in carrying this burden of the word of Lord God? But since there is no proper qualification, every knucklehead he thinks, though he is a drunkard, and his, fast, his father was a pastor, and how he tries to become a pastor and continues drinking, because once you get addicted to drinking, it's high impossible for you to let it go. You may act before the congregation, saying that you're pure, you're pious. But in return, you're drunkard. Because your father was a pastor, so you now, you now love to become a pastor. For what? Not for the teaching of the word of God, but for the money or the congregation, which will be divided for other churches. <laughs> You see, man is how much cunning in everything. You see, man is so much prepared to have everything well qualified in his life from his small to major things on this earth. His health, for his children, the best schools, the best masters, international schools, because they think international standards are greater. Everything they want to have the best. But when it comes to the pastor teacher, from where he is, what he is, what is his qualification, do he has, does he have the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher? Can he preach? When it comes to the pastor teacher, the preparation of him, the demands of the word of Lord God, what exactly they talk. They don't want to look and they just want to become guile ministry, dolas ministry, fraud ministry, deceitful ministry, cheating ministry, flirting ministry, trapping ministry, tricking ministry. And there is no faithful Keruso Thon Lagan preaching the word of God ministry today. Because you are not ashamed to break the laws of God. <laughs> Are you ashamed? First of all, you're khaki, eh? Wickedness to such a core that you're not ashamed to look that you're breaking the commandments of the word of Lord God. First of all, khaki, eh? And then automatically you'll end up like guile, dolas, fraud ministry, deceitful ministry, beguiling ministry, enticing ministry, tricking ministry, trapping ministry. And if you're talking this in the past, you teach us, then how many men in the congregation are still trying to deceive others? Why they're not able to speak truth to each other? The Ephesians 5 says, let us talk truth to each other. They don't want to talk truth. They want to deceive. They want to entice. They want to beguile. 
beguiled their own brothers as well, though it's been from the same mother's womb of one family, ending up in the court of law. <laughs> Not ashamed to suffer. You may think, let me continue the rest of my life with the things pertaining to diabetic insulin. Let the rest of the days of my life to control my heart be pure. Other things, you know, whatsoever you have, your cardiac uh, uh, medicine. But you don't want to confess. You don't want to get out from your cachea standards. You don't want to get out from your guile standards. You still want to have hatred. You still want to have the things pertaining to the word of Lord God to be loved with your lips, your hearts being very far away. You still want to continue that. And you don't want to learn the truth. You don't want to execute the truth. You don't want to understand the truth. And you just simply want to continue in your day-to-day -day life. And yet you are not able to respond. Why? Because you don't love the truth in Christ. That's why. Your lips are very, very far away from the truth. Even to talk the truth when you open up your mouth, far less your hearts could reign in truth. As it filleth in your heart, so your mouth speaketh, said the Lord God. But your heart has been filled with deceit. Your heart has been filled with trickery. Your heart has been filled with the standards of absolutely corrupted ministries in your thoughts. But no one is able to come back and say, We have the ministry of Kerusothon Lagan to preach the word and teach the word every day. Just look into the name of these ministries, what you're finding in India particularly in the South India, where we reside. Some would come and say grace and truth, some would come and say grace and peace, some would come and say Jalon, some would come and say Elim, some would come and say... All these are Kakia followed by Gail, Dolas. The right burden of the word of Lord God is to teach, execute the passages every day. That ministry is gone. No one would come back and keep the ministry, Kerusothon Lagan, preach the word. They may keep, but they know in action. As far as the action has been demanded from the word of Lord God, they say no. Because they are not interested in the word of Lord God at all. The third category we look over here, called to be hypocrite. <laughs> Acting on a stage, wearing the mask of other person, but inside you are something. These are hypocrites, and how many hypocrites are there, and why they will not suffer in sicknesses of this life? Aren't you acting hypocrite by not carrying your cross every day? Aren't you acting hypocrite by not giving your time to us 40 minutes to the Lord? Aren't you acting hypocrite with your own relationship with God, in your own consciousness towards God? Just look what are the demands of the word of Lord God and how much of your life you are acting hypocrite in your standards of life. Just look. Aren't you hypocrite in the standards of not reading the Bible and yet expecting to preach the Bible? Not reading the Bible in the standards of your English or other things, but reading the Bible in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic in the internal standards and that you are trying to preach the Bible. Aren't you hypocrite? You may say the Spirit will lead. Spirit doesn't lead in the sense of making the man's heart not to be burned. If the word of Lord God has been taught in the congregation, as Jeremiah was also been told in Jeremiah chapter 5, my words in your mouth will be like a fire and the people will be like a wood. The people who are sitting in the pews will be like wood. And when you preach unto them, the fire will consume them. And the fire-consuming messages won't come if you're not an exegetical preacher. You will have itching ears to impress. Therefore, you are preaching to them in the standards of itching ears. And therefore, you are hypocrite. When the word of Lord God has been taught and it has been found in the word of Lord God, then their hearts burn. But today men are preaching for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley to continue their ministry in the church so that let me finish up for one year as though even in Revolution 3 we read be careful as such how you are listening be careful as such how you are looking into it as you have been taught be careful as Apostle Paul writes again in Ephesians 3 as you have been taught so you perform it so you have to be very careful about these terms dear brethren 
but you have been tied up with the ministries of hypocrites in and around you. Trying to impress others, trying to please others, trying to be in the standards of saying that we have a great name and fame. Who cares about the great name and fame? The British preacher once emphasizes, when the servant of the king said to him, King is here, then the preacher said unto him in his sermon, King of kings is here, I need to fear him, not the king of you. Today, preachers are becoming hypocrites to the core to impress the people and to preach that which is pleasing to them so that they can get some gain on this earth. What gain we can get? The gain what you get by telling them lies or preaching them lies is absolutely sin for you. That's a sickness for you. Better you get or don't get anything. Don't be burdened for them because these people will not be disciples. Better you get or not. Preach the truth when they come in accord to be like a disciple and give unto you, take it. If they're not, just reject like Apostle Paul, then God the Father would provide like Elijah for us. When he's able to provide food with the ravenous nature crow, can't he provide you the food in the midst of these people? And God the Father could give water out of the earth. He could give uh, manna for 40 years in the wilderness. Do you not think he's going to provide you the best food? Because whenever we eat or drink, we want it for the glory of God. Eating or drinking, as per Ezekiel 4, what we have been read, should be the discipleship-oriented program. If you are eating, it should be for discipleship-oriented program. You should grow up into grammatias. You should take up your cross every day. You should become to grow up in the realm of making disciples of all the nations. That's what you eat. That's what you think of to eat, not your hypocrite ministry. And the people today, if the ministers are only to such kind of a great hypocrisy, what will be the fate of the men who are in the congregation? What will be the fate of these people who are standing in the congregation or not able to make up? And how much more hypocrite you are and why will not you suffer though you go, go on for your biopsy report and you expect a miracle or a change from the minister to whom you ask to pray? You confess your sins. Having to be iniquity regarded in your heart, you shall not be heard, says Psalm 66, 18. And how much of your iniquity you have in your heart, you know that very well. Because the deep things of God, except God, no one knows. The things of man, except himself, no one knows. So what are you? How are your consciousness? How much you are of a cacos, how much you are of a dolas, how much you are of a hypocrites. Just look your life. We don't want any answer because we know very well everyone has his own way of life to suffer. Because we all are standing for judgment before God, behind the bars to be judged. Who are we to judge you except to call you to the standards of the word of Lord God and make it to realize this is the standard, come back to it. And our duty is to teach to you to come back and learn those standards and not to make up your life to be judged. And when you have been following or falling into the standards of these things, you would really understand up to what extent you have been absolutely fallen away from grace. So what you do, you come back to look now. You come back to make up your standards of life according to the demands of the word of Lord God and you go on to correct your life according to the thinking of the word of Lord God. So the greater you fall to examine yourselves into the standards of the word of Lord God, the greater your sickness could be healed. Because you know very well what is your consciousness. You know very well what are the things in the heart, as even Peter prays in Acts 1, whether this could be for Matthias or it could be for some other person like Barnabas over there. So the uh, chit fell upon Matthias. So they considered Matthias to be appointed by God in that great prayer what he prays. He says, Lord, you know the hearts of this man. That's a very great fantastic prayer for human nature. Because the hearts of the men are deceitful above all. It is absolutely filled up with the standards of 
deceiving evil nature. The hearts are corrupted to the core. If the heart would be right, if the heart would be straight in relationship with God the Father, everything would be straight. But the heart is deceitfully and wicked and sick. It is desperate, wicked and sick. Therefore, what do you do? He prays over there in Acts saying that, You know the hearts of these people, Lord. Reward them. And what are the hearts of these people? Absolute lie. And what they do? They try to cover it up. <laughs> but God the Father knows even the intentions behind your thoughts. Imaginations behind your thinking. He knows about that very, very well. Don't think that you can be neglected of it. He knows about it very, very well. What you are, how you are, why you are. Everything he knows for sure up to what extent you have been there on this earth. So dear brethren, he emphasizes. You know the hearts of this man. So the Lord fell upon Matthias. But Matthias was not appointed by Lord God, the twelfth apostle in the place of Judas Iscariot, the one who was absolutely uh, Hitiros, as he said, friend. Now he became uh, one who is absolutely enemy. So now the category of the twelfth one being replaced to the Gentiles, we the Gentiles should be love like dolas oriented desmios, prisoners for Christ, believers like Apostle Paul. Our life will be like Judas Iscariot because every time we give a kiss and make our life, make our Lord God to be surrendered, to be ashamed, to be blasphemed on this earth. But now, like from the standards of Judas Iscariot being replaced by Paul, though so we have to live our life and not the man appointed, Matthias, like the way Peter did. So the third category over here we find hypocrisy. The fourth category we find envies. The word envies is called to be pathanos, meant to say the thing which is like jealousy. So here, corrupted. When anyone defiled in the slightest degree damaged, when the guardians are neglecting the duties in the temple of the Jews, that is called to be jealousy or corrupted. To lead away a Christian church from the state of knowledge and holiness in which it ought to abide. So in the ethical sense, it has been to be corrupt or deprived. Or in simple words, it meant to say, to be destroyed. So all enemies are nothing but missing the marks for the demands of the world of Lord God. And then he talks about evil speakings, katalalia. So what you talk, defamation. So what standards of defamation you are? You are a slanderer, you are a backbiter, the malign of the tongue, the sins of the tongue. So he says, first, clean from all of these categories so that he can work through you so that he can grow up from milk but being born again in Christ he says in verse 2 as newborn babies the newborn meant to say artigenatas just born being born again in Christ at the moment of salvation as brafos the people who are there yet in the standards of embryo he says desire the sincere milk the word guiltless unmixed and the word epipotio that which you long for he says desire this milk so what does he meant to say milk is nothing but metaphorically less difficult christian tropes because the things pertaining to the high standards of the word of lord god they cannot so he says First, at least experience the little truths. And little truths being controlled of Lord God, the Holy Spirit rebound. You know, the first five things in the uh, standards of this flat line of this 10 problem solving devices. The first one rebound. So, second one being under the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Grace orientation. The third one, doctrinal orientation. The fourth one, the fifth one, the door of hope. So the basic things, the basic things are the milk. These are called to be the spiritual childhood standards. And from problem solving device number six and seven and eight, personal, impersonal love towards God. And then sharing the happiness of Christ number nine and occupation with Christ number 10. 
So he claims now, having this door of hope you have entered, now you are reaching your spiritual adulthood, but till that time you are still spiritual childhood. So here he emphasizes, saying that, as newborn babies desire sincere milk, and milk refers all the time for the less difficult Christian truths. And then he says, sincere milk of the word logos, that you may grow auzano, that is, you can increase thereby. But the problem is, dear brethren, you are not able to increase from the standards of your hypocritical life, standards of your malice life, standards of your guile life, standards of your evil-speaking life, and standards of your envy's life. You are not able to grow up from there. Just look. Do you think your life has been grown up from the standards of such lies on this earth? Then how would God the Father work through you together, through you, as he says in Mark 16, 20? How can you walk? How can you make it up your life? So, dear brethren, you're suffering. Because, not like Job, because you've missed the mark and the responsibility is laid on upon your shoulders. To grow up, the first five things, what he says, all malice, all guile, all hypocrisies, all envies, all evil speaking, you have lost it. Grow up from there. But dear brethren, we look. You are not eating your bread according to the standards of the word of God. You are not drinking your water according to the demands of the word of Lord God. Why? You reject the correction. Therefore, he said in Proverbs chapter 3, in verse number 11, very, very important admonition for us. Yehovah's instruction, that's the word to be in the Hebrew. Yehovah's chastening, my son, despise not. It is not any other man's chastening. It is not the man. It is the message. It is not the personality. It is the thing pertaining to Lord God, the Holy Ghost in their life to train, to teach them. So in simple words he says, Yehovah's chastening, Musar, the word pertaining to the pressures of your life to renovate the standards of your thinking. You know, until and unless you take the first step, like the life of Moses, he wants to look upon the burning bush, which is not consumed. But, he wants to make up to teach them till Moses could take the first step in Exodus 3. God the Father didn't call him to come in. That's the same thing over here. Musa are in the sense, if you are not taking the step in your life at any cost of your life to daily take in the word of Lord God, to daily learn the word of Lord God, if you have not taken that first step, that's the word Musar, Yehovah, our Lord, our God, wants to give you that instruction, provided you take the first step. No matter what may be the pressure in your life, the first thing what you need to look is to renovate the standards of your thinking and how to tell that the world is not in its mind if the world doesn't take the word of God. Therefore, the earth shall be filled with the glory of Lord God the Father through his disciples. Because the world is not able to realize the true life begins with the mind of Christ, the voice of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. Therefore, the world have this rationalism and empiricism type of life, but we walk by faith. Though we use sometimes to look cause and effect, to look your reasoning. But the base is absolute faith. As such, without faith it is impossible to please God, so it is your life. It's an absolute standards of faith. So, dear brethren, he says, Musa, no matter what may be the pressure in your life, first come to renovate the standards of your thinking according to the demands of the word of Lord God, whatsoever the pressures in your life. If you don't take the word of Lord God, your world is dead. Your life is absolutely dead. Nothing in the world can be replaced for the word of Lord God. Nothing in the world can be 
made a greater pleasure and a joy than the word of Lord God. The word what we read in Proverbs through it emphasizes, saying the point, even the things which you cannot desire, they cannot be compared to the word of Lord God, because you may know only the things what you can look and pursue. The ways of the eyes of the servant were been opened up by Elisha to say, Lord, make him to look the fires of chariots surrounding us. So in the sense he meant to say, ye cannot look the desires what you cannot even imagine to desire, because greater than that is the word of God. And Gehage, when he looks upon the things pertaining to the chariots of fire, he's been absolutely shocked to know the truth. That's very simple, dear brethren. And he says, what you cannot desire, what you cannot know. Even if he would compare that, if you can know what you can cannot desire, he says, that cannot be compared to the word of God. So, dear brethren, the first thing, Musa, whatever may be the pressure in your life, come to renovate the standards of your thinking. Whatever may be the pressure in your life, give number one priority to the word of Lord God. Whatever may be the pressure in your life, think upon the mind of Christ. Don't go on to waste your life on this earth. That's how simple it is. So, dear brethren, he says, Musa of Jehovah Elohim, reject not, melt it not, the word Ma'as meant to say, refuse it not, reject it not. Put it up in your blood. When you're having pressure, don't quit. Come every day to the word of Lord God. Don't quit. That's the word meant to say over here. Musar not. The discipline what has been given, you just don't go to reject. No matter what may be the pressure in your life, come to take in the word of Lord God. Make it up to be for your blood. Take it up to the standards of the word of Lord God. Don't reject it. Don't let it go. Don't melt it off. So he says, My son, Ben, make it up in the standards of your tent, followed by the vigor and valor of your life. He says, Don't reject the teachings or whatever may be the pressure in your life. Don't let go to cross the word of God. And then he says, Neither be weary. The word weary meant to say, Get frustrated. When the right teaching has been taught for you, you get loathed, grieved, abhorred, or becoming like a sickening dread in your life. So he says, Kuts. The word Kuts meant to say, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun, you will be facing pressure if needed. You will be facing the things pertaining to this life on this earth. So he says, just be careful. Don't get frustrated. <clears throat> Whatsoever may be the pressure in your life, give that day of time for Christ. Because you may be anything on this earth, but you cannot rob the time from the word of Lord God. Anything. If you would love to give your time for the word of Lord God and respect and do the things according to the will of Lord God, you would have something greater of a life, which these men haven't realized at all on this earth. Anything, he says, whatsoever it might be, do not get to be as rejecting the word of God from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun. You may have a lot of pressure in your life, but on that particular day, give the thing that which is pertaining to the word of Lord God and don't let it go. So he says, neither be wary of his correction. The word correction is called to be tokeka. And what is that? You correct them with reproof. And the word reproof over here meant to say the blessing what the scribes get versus the cursing what the nominal Christians get. Tokea meant to say scribes who have built a wall of fortification in such a thing in this life that they are not at all worried. Because these people, they go on to have a reproof. These people, they have the great proof of a ministry, as we read the word aglanko, to reprove them according to the standards of the word of Lord God. So these people, they have that reproof. So under this aglanko ministry, they don't fear. So he says, don't get loathsome, don't get grieved when God the Father is showing you the proof. Proof of the people who walked in truth and be blessed. Proof of the people who rejected the truth and died. 
by disobeying the commandments of the word of Lord God, by not performing the will of Lord God, the people who died. So he's showing the proof. He's showing them as an example to you. So he says, my son, let go the milk activities. Let go the bread activities. Come back and eat the strong meat activities. Hebrews 5, 12 through 14. Looking upon the time, you should be the communicators of Bible doctrine. But you're still minicap and you're thinking that you are like Job and that's the reason you're suffering. But in return, your conscience knows very well if you're not worse than that Samaritan woman, it will answer you to teach that you're absolutely having guilt in you. The guilt, you are living a life of shameless wickedness because you're breaking the laws of the word of Lord God and enjoying your life on this earth. So you have that guilt in you. You're having that dollars nature in you. You're having that hypocritical nature in you. And you suffer for your sin. You suffer for your sin. The result is your sickness. You're not even past the milk activities. Then how would you be for bread? How would you be for strong meat in this life? No, dear brother. The things that are happening in the church age are not in accord with the word of Lord God. The ministers who have come to the church age pulpits, they haven't followed the prescribed demands of the word of Lord God for a minister. So everything what we look today in the present Christendom is going absolutely in a wrong way. The ways which God the Father has told you long back, you shall not walk in them. You will be cursed. But these people don't believe that, don't understand that. They want to be cursed. So for a sign of a symbol, whenever the prophets, they were doing their work. So he said in Ezekiel chapter 5 in verse number 1 to Ezekiel, to shave off your head and your beard with a sharp razor of a blade like a bab from, the, bab from the, the people who are going to be the babblers. So he says, go back. Barbers, not babblers, barbers. So take that, divide into three parts and put, because the reason is very simple. They have rejected the word of Lord God. They showed the sign to walk naked. Obadiah followed by Isaiah as well for three years. Never they learned. Because it shows all the time when we look in the present terms of this church age, how stupid these are not to obey the demands of the word of Lord God. They're just walking in such a way of life. And yet, dear brethren, how many days more you want to reject the truth? Know the truth. Sat our Lord of a God, the truth will set you free. And you cannot know the truth if you're not discipled in his word. And you cannot be disciple for his word if you don't continue in his word. How simple it is. And how many of them they are grown up? Looking upon the age of the time, we look a minicab becoming a major, a small girl becoming a marriage age capability. But when you will become that age of capability to Christ so that he can work through you his journey, his desire, his goal in this life. And if you're not, then who will go? Every believer body has been given that great pleasure to understand according to the thinking of the mind of Christ to do his will. Your body has not been given to desire upon your flesh. Your body is the temple of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. He has his desire. Your property is not your own. He has some work with you. And don't end it up in sick by your sinning. Confess your sins to God the Father. If peradventure God the Father would love to give you grace because he knows very well in his own assigned knowledge up to what extent you will stand for truth and again how you are going to fall. And you have to come up like a penitent, penitent sinner to confess your sins and get back to the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost. Is all the time ready to forgive you, to give you a new life, to give you a new grace. And the greater you reject the standards of this mind of Christ, the greater you're going to use this body to be 
miscalculated in spiritual essence and value on this earth. So think over these issues. Life is too short. At the responsibility laid on upon our shoulders is too large. And which way you want to go, you decide. Because the grace that has been given for us on this earth, not using it in vain glory, renovate the standards of your thinking according to the demands of the word of Lord God and perform your life to be executed. Because the Christendom has been infiltrated with Satan copulation point in producing many, many false men in your pulpits. Every nick and corner you are able to find culprit ministry, the dolas ministry, treachery ministry, deceiving ministry, fraud ministry. If they really been oriented to the word of Lord God, they would make it to learn the word of Lord God every day. They would make it to make it to listen and understand the exegema standards of the mind of Christ. And what these people they are doing, it's not at all the ministry of the word of Lord God. These are fraud. These are hypocrites to the core. And since at every nick and corner, if you go on to look in the viewpoint of the word of Lord God, exactly what are the demands of the word of Lord God and what are these people they are practicing and they are preaching to you, if you would just examine yourself, you would understand what a liars these people they are for you. And at the cost of your own second bill for the hospital, they are enjoying their life. Because you pay them back again 10% of your tithe, the first fruits, the bands to be increased. But are not paying back the thing pertaining to the first day of this life, which have been given again. It's a new day, 24 hours, in the 2 hours, 40 minutes. You're not paying that back to Lord God, the 10% of the tithe of your time. But they love to beg from you your income at the same time making your money to be spent in your hospital beds. But your body is not designed for that. Your body is designed by Lord God to work through you his work. So he wants us to first train us up. He wants us to cleanse us up. That's what we find in Ezekiel 45. Cleanse the temple by the offering of sin. First he wants to cleanse you out by the offering of sin on the cross. And now the peace offering, the woe offering, the libation offering. He wants to make it up through your body. But you men haven't been yet paid to look and realize you have been cleansed out from your sin. That's what we read in over there in First Peter, Second Peter chapter 1 saying that these people, they forgot they have been cleansed from their old nature of sin. Therefore, they are not having this viewpoint to add faith and reach the standards of aretas, virtue, by adding to it temperance, knowledge, the word of God, the patience, and then making up to be in the standards of the mind of Christ, charity and brotherly kindness. So he says, these people, they have forgot from where they have been purged. Because you are not able to look, you have to march ahead in the presence of God, the Holy Ghost, every day. They have forgot. And since you have been given the privilege to understand the mind of Christ and walk according to the demands of the word of Lord God, wake up. Because life is too short. The responsibility laid on upon our shoulders is too large. And don't waste the valuable grace of Lord God into the ministry of sin. Because God the Father wants you to work through you. And if he wants to work through you, if he wants to abode in you, because God the Holy Ghost always indwells in us, and God the Son indwells in us, provided you walk according to the demands of the word of Lord God. And if Lord God the Holy Ghost should operate in you, then wake up to cleanse every breath of your life, the sins which God the Father hates, and the sins not just your physical moral sins, but the sins against Lord God the Holy Ghost by not becoming the disciples to carry your cross every day and walk in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. The sins which are causing you to die sick in life, wake up. Because your life has been designed to work together with God the Father. Be aware of such liars who are in the midst of you like revenue's wolves. 
Therefore, Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 20 rightly gave long back in verse number 32, I commend you to the grace and to the word of Lord God, which is able to build you up, because after my departure, revenues wolves will enter. And today we are able to find such revenues wolves to the core, who reject and despise the teachings of the word of Lord God, and who are never able to realize the importance of the mind of Christ, which has been so graciously given to our hands, which has been told as para titeme, command, to beside place. Because he said that after his departure, the things pertaining to revenues wolves will enter, and we are finding that today. So, dear brethren, wake up to look your inheritance among all that which have been sanctified, so that this paratiteme wherewith you have been handed over to the word of Lord God and to the grace of Lord God, that which is able dunamai for epi oikodomio to build upon in the doom of strength and to give you inheritance, clero nema as a property of eternal blessedness, as true believers will receive when they walk in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost, which is expected after the visible return of Christ. Among all the people that are made sanctified, hagi yazo, meant to say consecrated one to God. So, dear brethren, how many days more? If you still want to be like a bastard Christian, if you still want to be under the ministry of hypocrite, kakia, followed by dolas, hypocrite, jealousy-oriented ministries on this earth, dear brethren, you are the men of most miserable because though you have been educated, you are not able to look and listen and read the word of Lord God. It's your fault and God the Father cannot help you out. Dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short and the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large and which way you want to go, you decide. But remember, God walked through the apostles in Mark 16.20 and that God the Father is waiting to walk through this flesh for the praise of his glory, provided we are sanctified and kept apart for the will and the work of God the Father, performing to fear and to tremble at his word for the praise of his glory on this earth. So which way you want to go, you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of his glory in his grace. So with our head, board and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudible to link to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that's the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is so very simple, believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest mind is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the past you teach us, the greatest mind is to carry so thorn log on. Herald the word in season out of sin because the amount of my witnesses where we have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in validity for the Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of his glory in his matchless, marvelous, infinite, glorious grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father, being thankful for this privilege which you have given unto us to have fellowship with you through the word. Father, we pray that Lord God the Holy Ghost will enlighten and challenge us by the recommendation which you have received through the Spirit to realize and to understand our life in accord with the word of Lord God for which you have called us to walk through our flesh to do your work on this earth. In Christ, matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father, may Lord God the Holy Ghost enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.